Welcome to the latest episode of Grow by the Human Advisor. I am your host, Tyrone Ross. In this episode, you will see my conversation with my friend, the one and only Desarte Yarnway of Burknell Financial. Right away, we dig into his best and favorite growth idea, but more importantly, something that's personal to him, having just moved his practice from the West Coast to the East Coast. I ask him about some of the unique challenges he's faced growing his practice during this time and also servicing existing clients. Sit back. Enjoy this conversation. We'll see you on the next one. I appreciate you. Welcome to another episode of Grow. I'm your host, Tyrone Ross. I'm here with my friend, the young king, Desarte Yarnway of Burknell Financial. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well, Tyrone. How are you doing? Good, man. Hanging in there. Um, before we started recording, I mentioned that you know what I mean? You you high and tight. I appreciate that. You know what I mean? I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that, man. So right away, I want to get right into it. Obviously, you know, you're you're young, you're an upstart. Uh, we've all watched your growth, right? And and while we have you here. So talk to me about what have you found to be the most effective thing for you to grow your practice um, as you start in this industry and over the last few years? Um, well, first, thank you for having me, Tyrone. I think that for me, I've been saying a lot of things on Twitter lately. One of those things has been amplify your voice. The other thing is specialization over generalization, right? So for mm -hmm. me, I've really been trying to amplify my voice. You can get mutual funds, you can get stocks, you can get bonds, you can get a, a core portfolio from any financial institution on Wall Street, right? But what you can't get is the individual who's able to communicate that effectively, who's able to share their story mm -hmm. and for you to feel like you trust this individual with, their, with your money. Right. So for me, in, in this time of quarantine and lockdown, I've really been trying to be in the ears of many of my clients. Right. And many of my prospective clients. Right. By creating a weekly blog, by creating a podcast, as you know, you've been on the Young Money podcast, but also other side podcasts specifically for individuals at certain companies that we work with, like Google, Facebook, um, Aerotech, right? So we're speaking directly to their pain points, directly to their compensation plans. Um, and they're hearing from me, not only from a financial services sense, but from a human sense as, as well. So I would say just amplifying my voice and beginning to specialize in the type of client and the type of person that I wanna work with. So let me, let me dig in there a little bit. So obviously anyone that knows you, you're very measured when you speak, you have a very, powerful tone but it's but it's also very 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 calculated and it speaks to people again because you keep things simple and, it, and it's also very calming so i feel like that is a strategy it's like it whether you purposely do it or not it's a growth strategy for you but have you found that the type of clients that you work with work with you because it's a combo of keeping things simple and also being able to speak to people in not a very hurried new jersey type of way <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm trying to learn the New Jersey way for sure. But, uh, I would no, say don't that do that. People can sense authenticity. There's no way around it. No matter where you're from. I mean, you'll see a baby and a baby might cry if they feel like you're you're coming off too strong or something. Right. People can feel that comfort of authenticity. And in the beginning years of my practice, I was a young black man trying to make it here in the industry. Right. When we know mm -hmm. that the, the percentage for our likelihood of success is very low. So the thing that I found that stood out for me was being me, right? Not writing like I was some big hedge fund mogul, not writing like I was running a big company, but literally writing from the standpoint of my experiences. And that was just authentic. So when people saw that, when they, was able, when they were able to resonate with those experiences, that led um, consequently to more business, more opportunities to speak with people and really understand their financial circumstance. So moving to the second part of the conversation, which I think, again, I, I find fascinating. I think there's a lot of financial advisors out there that will be able to glean um, some perspective from this is that prior to the pandemic, like right before um, you move across the country to ground zero to New Jersey um, and still had to grow your practice, service clients. So talk to everyone there a little bit about what that's been like, because I'm certain you're not the only one, but talk about some of the unique challenges and also what you've done to be able to overcome that and continue to grow during this time period, which we all know to be high, highly volatile um, and frustrating, at least. Yes. So for me, I mean, the story starts February 2019 when I acquired an office space in San Francisco. Now, I'm thinking that, you know, again, just having this, I guess, insecurity about being young 
a black advisor, people would want to see that I was stable, right? So let mm. me have an office space that I could put my picture up, you know, my family and have a place for you to come and say, well, hey, this is a person that I trust to give a quarter, half a million dollars to, right? Mm -hmm. It's just this like perverse way of thinking, I guess, when you feel like your back's against the wall if you have something to prove, right? So in the midst of that year, I was able to grow my business almost 3x um, without these clients coming into the office. So I'll give you the numbers exactly. I had about 573 client appointments last year, right? Wow. Of which 33 clients came into the office. And I would probably whittle that number down. Half of that number was probably you know, we were talking about business. We were talking about their plans. Others like, hey, I just want to stop by your office and talk to you. I want to see you, right? Nothing super heavy, right? I just want to come check out the office, right? So with that being said, I saw an opportunity there to really digitize my practice to say, hey, why, how about we save this money here, pass these savings on to our clients, right? And figure that we'll run it digitally and be able to meet them at their convenience no matter where they are, right? Our clients are people that are in commuting that have kids or are having kids right have a bunch of responsibilities so what time do they really have to come into my office very unlikely right so i think that right. with the transition to jersey one of the things that i had to do was really beef up my technology to make okay. sure that i was able to serve clients in this unparalleled way and not drop off the level of service that i want to be uh i want to be known to to give them right so that meant having secure uploading services right that yep. meant um having zoom right and all of his capabilities yeah. that meant mm -hmm. more contact through the writing that i'm doing now right through the podcast and through phone calls and that meant having a structured way of setting up quote unquote office hours so when i am in town right they already know what time slots they can book where they can meet me at so it doesn't feel um any any more stressful for them right so i think that for me it was just really thinking ahead to see what suits uh the needs right in the lifestyle of my clients now having been somewhat settled just to tie all of this up having been somewhat settled and and obviously you found your groove i see the the emails going out and, and the pod and you kind of hit a groove here is there anything you would have done differently um or do you feel like everything the, the plan was executed to the t in terms of again moving across the country because there's a personal side of that right you have your own yeah. personal stuff and then you move in your practice and mm -hmm. so did you is there anything you would go back and say man i would do that differently or did it all go according to what you had planned when you initially decided to leave? I don't think anything goes as planned, but I think what ends up happening is what's supposed to happen, right? So for mm -hmm. me, if I could do anything differently, I probably would have either sent a mass letter to my client saying, hey, this is going to be how we're going to run our business from now on. I was kind okay. of trying to uh, not disrupt anything, right? Because the business is running well. It's growing. It's doing well. You don't want to scare any clients. Like, right. Why is he moving? Why is this happening? I probably would have just tackled that head on and had the conversation up front saying, hey, this is why I'm moving. Um, this is what I'm going to do for at least a year. Right. And this is how we're going to be facilitating our engagement from now. But I've seen that COVID's kind of helped in a sense in that the world is digitizing itself. Right. So by delaying that conversation, my clients were the first one to say, hey, why don't we just meet on Zoom? And I was already going in that direction. Right. So I think that it kind of happened as it was supposed to, I think that I'm strongly considering just making my practice fully digital. Okay. Uh, as I believe that the world is is shifting in, into that direction. 100%, 100%. Well, here we go. Where can the people find you if they want to hear more about what you're doing, if they want to reach out for a consultation or work with you, what's the best way to do that? Best way to reach me, www.burknell.com. That's B-E-R-K-N-E-L-L.com. And again, you can find me on all social media platforms at Desarte Yarnway. As for us, when you visit the Altruist YouTube page, be sure to subscribe, like, and share. You will find there the Human Advisor Podcast, the Grow Series, and now our new series, Learn with Brittany Castro. We will see you guys on the next one. I appreciate you.